Nuclear option offers a variety of available weapons across multiple archetypes, not all of which are implemented at time of writing. The following are a selection of weapons available as of patch 0.27.4, along with their attributes and best use cases. Before discussing weapons in the game, it's important to define some vocabulary for newcomers that may not be familiar. If you know these terms or want to skip ahead, this video is bookmarked to make finding information about individual weapons or topics much easier. All weapons in nuclear option are considered smart, meaning that these weapons have computers and sensors, known as a guidance system, that allow these weapons to follow targets after they've been fired. In this video, weapons are divided into four categories, air to air, air to ground, ground to ground, and ground to air. These archetypes affect how and where a given weapon is used and which of the three common guidance methods are used. Optically guided weapons use a camera, laser, or light sensor to track targets. This tracking method provides the greatest accuracy when used in high interference or high target density environments. This system is most commonly found on air-to-ground weapons, like bombs, rockets, and cruise missiles. Optical guidance cannot be jammed or confused with countermeasures, but is only effective against stationary or slow-moving targets. Thermal guidance, also called infrared or IR tracking, uses the heat generated by vehicle exhaust or radiators. These missiles are cheap, simple, and can be fired in large numbers, though they have more limited range compared to radar-guided missiles. Thermal guidance can be defeated using flares, but are immune to radar jamming. Radar-guided missiles also use radio signals to follow a potential target. These missiles are immune to thermal interference, so flares don't work against them. The only way to stop a radar-guided missile is to intercept it, or block the radio signals that it uses for guidance. This can be done by jamming it, notching it, or using an interceptor weapon. Jamming is the process of creating lots of radio noise to distract or confuse an incoming missile. Notching is the use of close terrain or other large objects to hide from a missile's radar tracking after it has been fired. Air-to-air -air missiles. Air-to-air -air missiles are designed to be fired from one aircraft to another, though many of these missiles can also be fired from ground-to-air platforms. IRM-S1 The smallest and cheapest air-to-air -air missile in the game, the IRM-S1 is slow but exceptionally agile. While its warhead isn't powerful, the S1's thermal tracking systems are very accurate allowing this missile to be fired quickly and precisely at the drop of a hat. With a 5km maximum range, it's a favorite of short-range air defense systems, where the S-1 excels at incoming missile and light aircraft intercept. The IRM S-1 can be readily defeated using flares or ground close maneuvering. On its own, this missile isn't hard to deal with, but is often used to put pressure on attacking aircraft over time, by depleting their flare reserves. Low cost, compact size, and high flexibility mean that the S-1 is easier to transport and therefore a popular choice for mobile air defense systems as well. MMR S-3 Designed primarily for use against other aircraft, the S-3 is larger and faster than the S-1, making it harder to carry in large numbers. With a maximum range of about 15 kilometers, depending on speed and altitude, the S-3 is a popular choice for air-to-air -air mission profiles. It can be carried by, and used effectively against, supersonic aircraft of all kinds, while remaining agile enough to kill incoming missiles. AAM-29 Scythe The current, smallest, active radar-guided missile in the game. The Scythe offers tremendous range and stopping power, though its mass and size preclude or significantly limit deployment on lighter aircraft. 
with a 120 kilometer range, the scythe can attack pretty much anything it can see. Though firing at longer range means that a target has more time to notch, intercept, or otherwise evade missile guidance. The scythe is maneuverable enough to be usable at medium or short range alongside the MMR-S3, and makes for an excellent one-two punch against targets with multiple countermeasure sets. Ground-to-air missiles a ground-to-air missile is generally designed to be fired only from ground vehicles. This means they care less about weight and placement than air-to-air -air missiles. As a result, these weapons are usually more powerful and can be carried in larger magazines than aircraft can typically support. Ram 45 Designed around a vertical launch system and omnidirectional targeting, the Ram 45 is both compact and modular, allowing large magazines to be fitted on several different platforms. Most commonly seen in the Bolt Strike Tank and Shard Corvette, the Ram can target incoming ordnance and aircraft with high precision up to a 15km range. Despite its small size and limited range, the Ram 45 carries a powerful warhead that is effective against all aircraft. Stratolance R9. Designed primarily to deny high altitudes to the enemy, the R9 platform is reliant on a separate, long-range radar system to see its targets. Extreme range focus means that the lance performs poorly at lower altitudes, and is remarkably easy to notch against the terrain. Even when flying over the ocean, pilots who can hug the deck below 15 meters are essentially invisible to it, and can close to engage the launcher directly, but are vulnerable to other close-range defenses in the process. Air-to-ground missiles Missiles optimized for ground attack find limited use in other fields of battle, so there are few applications outside of aircraft for these weapons. These missiles often sacrifice agility for speed and armor penetration, so they are typically useless against other aircraft, though a few exceptions exist. AGR-18 Linchpin While it's used like a rocket, the linchpin is technically a missile, with a limited guidance system and 5km range. Linchpins are carried in small pod launchers and designed to be fired in groups, making them ideal for saturation attack against air defenses or closely grouped vehicles. With a 2kg warhead, these rockets are not individually significant, but in swarms, they can overwhelm and destroy ground vehicles. Their low mass and compact design make the linchpin a common sight on light aircraft and helicopters, but this flexibility comes at the cost of destructive potential. The linchpin is not effective against heavy armor, fortifications, or large structures like factories, but can devastate soft targets, light armor, and small ships. The linchpin is weak against SPAAG, or Anvil, ballistic defense systems, which can destroy rocket swarms with enough advanced warning. AGM-48 the smallest and lightest of the full-sized air-to-ground missiles, the AGM-48, has an 8km range and 10kg warhead yield. This allows it to destroy most ground vehicles with a single shot and from beyond their engagement range. But this metric is deceiving, because the AGM-48 is remarkably easy to intercept. The AGM-48 is one of the few air-to-ground missiles able to attack aircraft, typically helicopters, under the right conditions. Any air defense vehicle can destroy this missile in flight, and often will, if fired from maximum range. This means the AGM is best deployed in groups against multiple targets from between 2 and 5 kilometers. With its limited maneuvering ability, Firing the AGM-48 from too close to the target will often result in a missed shot. AGM-68 Everything you loved about the AGM-48, 
but in a bigger package, sporting a 130 kilogram warhead. The AGM-68 is less maneuverable than its smaller cousin, and so its minimum effective range hovers around 5 kilometers, depending on speed and vector. Its flexible optical targeting system means the AGM-68 is still effective against any ground vehicle, though it's best used against tanks, buildings, and fortifications. The AGM-68 shares the same vulnerability to intercept as other air-to-ground missiles, a vulnerability which is emphasized by its additional range and weight. The AGM-68 remains relatively inexpensive compared to other ground-focused missiles, but its larger size and mass reduce deployment options on smaller aircraft. Though bombers are capable of bulk transport and saturation attack using this missile. ARAD-116 Anti-radiation missiles are technically radar-guided, but instead of generating radar signatures, they listen for and seek them out. This attribute is unique among weapon systems, in that it makes the ARAD somewhat autonomous. It's one of the only missile systems that can be fired without a target lock and find one on its own, from a range of 120 kilometers if needed. The ARAD's targeting system is passive, meaning that it listens for emissions rather than generating its own. This means that the ARAD can only follow targets that are emitting an active radar signature and will not work against ground vehicles, structures, or aircraft that do not have one. Active radar signatures are reflected on the map by an orange pulsing line connecting your aircraft to the radar that has detected you. While slightly less powerful than an AGM-68, the ARAD can still kill heavily armored vehicles with a single strike, though ships and fortifications can require multiple hits. Care should be used when this missile is fired without an initial target since the ARAD does not distinguish between friend and foe in autonomous mode and will seek out any radar signature that wanders into its field of view. While technically capable of seeking aircraft, the ARAD's guidance system is intended for air-to-ground use and is not accurate enough to reliably track aircraft, though it can find large bombers and e-warfare planes provided they don't turn off their radar systems and dive for terrain. Cruise Missile The cruise missile can engage ground targets up to 1,500 kilometers distance using GPS coordinates alone. This is possible due to its more complex terrain-skimming navigation system, which helps the missile to evade long-range radar and high-altitude air defense. Skimming the ground requires the cruise missile to travel at subsonic speeds, making it more vulnerable to intercept when detected. A single cruise missile carries a payload similar to that of a GPO-500, and is effective against the same kinds of targets. All vehicles, most buildings, and smaller fortifications are vulnerable to cruise missile strikes, though heavy fortifications may require several direct hits. Nuclear Cruise Missile, 20 kiloton. Larger and slower than a conventional cruise missile, but sporting the same ground skimming guidance system, a 20 kiloton nuclear cruise missile is the final word on localized devastation. Only one of these monsters needs to get through an air defense to wipe out even the largest strategic facilities. This weapon is best deployed alongside swarms of standard cruise missiles or after local air defense has been eliminated. Gravity Bombs Air to Ground For those times when the simplest solution is actually the best, gravity bombs rely on the altitude and speed of their host aircraft to reach a target. Since these weapons have no propulsion, they emit no traceable heat signatures and can bypass any defense reliant on thermal guidance. Gravity bombs offer much higher damage than an equally sized missile, but are harder to deploy and are weak against all radar-based defenses. PAV, 
80 LR. The smallest and lightest of the gravity bombs, this optically guided weapon is equipped with glider wings that provide much greater range when deployed from altitude. Gliding allows light aircraft to deploy the ADLR from farther away and with less need for setup and positioning during a bombing run. The extra range provided by glide capability comes at the cost of speed, making the ADLR easier for radar and ballistic defenses to intercept. PAB-250 This small but highly flexible optically guided bomb is designed for use against heavy armor and small fortifications. Considered the smallest true gravity bomb, the 250 drops on a traditional trajectory, optimized for use on smaller aircraft. It's the most flexible gravity bomb on offer and is supported by most fixed-wing platforms. While the payload is impressive for its size, the PAB-250 works best when targeting individual threats and does not deal large area damage. GPO-500 This more powerful surface detonating bomb provides for an area effect explosion that can destroy multiple targets within its blast radius, though damage falls off precipitously with distance from the epicenter. Ideal for use against surface structures, convoys, and fortifications, the GPO-500 can devastate small and medium-sized facilities. Though it lacks the penetrating power to destroy bunkers and other similarly hardened targets. GPO 2P Augur A true bunker buster, the Augur requires heavy air power to deploy. Sporting a massive 800 kilogram explosive yield, the auger relies on its mass to act as a pile driver, shoving the warhead deep into the ground before its delayed trigger detonates. This action concentrates damage to a single target, but limits the total area of effect. The auger can still inflict significant damage around the target, but the area effects aren't much better than a GPO 500. Demolition Bomb also known as a thermobaric, vacuum, or fuel air bomb, these weapons work by dispersing a highly volatile and explosive fuel mixture above the ground and then igniting the resulting vapor cloud. The demolition bomb is ideal for destroying light vehicles or large unfortified buildings, but its effects on armored or fortified targets are limited. With a warhead yield equivalent to 11 tons of TNT, the demolition bomb is easy to target during descent. Only the largest bombers can support this weapon, and it must be deployed from a moderate altitude to avoid damaging a host aircraft. Care must be taken to suppress hostile air defenses because the demolition bomb's large size and slow approach make it very easy to target. 1.5 Kiloton Nuclear Bomb Offering more than 10 times the destructive power of a demolition bomb, this compact tactical nuke is small and light enough to be used on most aircraft. Packing enough destructive power to kill almost everything, the 1.5 kiloton payload deals enough area damage to wipe out entire outposts, forward operating bases, moderate fortifications, convoys, and compact airfields. These weapons are the selection available as of patch 0.27.4 and may not reflect the current offerings in-game. Individual weapon performance in-game may differ from the figures provided in this video, as future patches make adjustments. Feel free to add any information, corrections, or insights I may have missed in the comments below. That's all I have for today. See you all later.